I want to start uh, by talking about a different Brown Amendment, and that is you may remember that Senator Brown joined with Senator Kaufman back during the Dodd-Frank debates to introduce an amendment that would have broken up the country's largest banks. The amendment had bipartisan support behind it, uh, but it didn't pass, and we all know what's happened since then. The four biggest banks, banks that were considered too big to fail before the crisis, are now 30% larger than they were just five years ago. And there have been huge scandals, some of which have been mentioned today. The LIBOR scandal, the infamous London whale, uh, the uh, deliberate foreclosure fraud. It's been one scandal breaking on top of another. And Attorney General Holder has said that the Justice Department can't consider litigation against Wall Street banks without factoring in potential systemic economic impact that could result. And while we all know there are parts of Dodd-Frank that are there to address the problem, even Federal Reserve Chair Bernanke has admitted that too big to fail is not yet over. So I know you were elsewhere in the Obama administration during the Dodd-Frank debate, but I'd like to read you a quote from a New Yorker article from that time. This is what a senior Treasury official said about the brown Kaufman too big to fail amendment. If we, meaning the Treasury Department, had been for it, it probably would have happened. But we weren't, so it didn't. So, Mr. Secretary, the Treasury Department said its opposition to breaking up the big banks is an important reason that my colleague Senator Brown's amendment didn't pass. The question I want to ask now is, has Treasury Department's position changed, or are you still opposed to capping the size of the largest financial institutions. Senator, um, I've tried to indicate in my response to other questions today that um, ending too big to fail is our policy and we're determined to do it. Um, I, uh, let the, me just focus you in here though, Mr. Secretary. The question is not are we all trying to aim toward too, ending too big to fail. My question is specifically about capping the size of the largest financial institutions. It was an amendment that nearly passed. It had bipartisan support. The Treasury opposed it, and according to the Treasury's own folks, it was the Treasury opposition that killed off breaking up the big banks. And I want to know if yeah. Treasury's changed its position. As you noted, I, I was not at Treasury at the time, Fair so I can't, I can't speak to the, the exact decisions that were made there. I think we're on a path now which is the right path, which is to implement Dodd-Frank and uh, to, to then take stock when we're done implementing Dodd-Frank. I think that there have been a lot of calls for legislation in this area, and I've said the same thing to people who wanted very different kinds of changes, that our job right now is to implement a very important law with very powerful tools, and then to take stock of whether or not there are other actions that are required. The question is, though, Secretary Liu, this was about concentration. We all said back in 2008, 2009, the problem that caused the financial crash in part was concentration in the banking industry. And what do we see now? We see more concentration. One of the tools considered for Dodd-Frank was a way to end that concentration. So let me try the question a different way. How big do the biggest banks have to get before we consider breaking them up? They're 30% bigger now than they were five years ago. Do they have to double in size, triple in size, quadruple in size? before we talk about breaking up the biggest financial institutions. Senator, there are many uh, uh, changes that have taken effect since the passage of Dodd-Frank. We have better capitalized banks. We have better visibility into the banks. We have derivatives being traded in a way where we can see what's going on and understand it. So there were many things going on that contributed to the financial crisis, and we're making good progress. We still have more progress to make. So, um, so I, are you saying, Mr. Secretary, that if we have increasing concentration in the banking industry. If the biggest banks double in size, that that doesn't worry you? What I'm worried about is have we taken into account the measures that prevent systemic risk from being the kind of threat it was in 2008? Size is one factor, but size is not the only factor. Fair and enough that it's not the only one, but size is one that's growing, and size is one that's powerfully and, important. And I think if we look at what happened from 2008 till now, 
part of the reason that some of those institutions grew is that there were other institutions that failed that had to be uh, uh, you know, reorganized, and it was it was it was a, an unusual period of time where uh, we were seeing, you know, ironically, a shrinking of the number of players because of the failures oh. of institutions. So there are many things going on, and I'm not I, I, I'm not trying to um, uh, avoid uh, you know, addressing the question of too big to fail. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to address quite clearly that that's an unacceptable policy, but I think we have to um, take into account all the factors that uh, together add up to systemic risk. Uh, fair enough, Mr. Liu, but, or Secretary Liu, but I really think the evidence suggests that concentration is one of those factors and that when we see the largest financial institutions getting bigger and bigger, that it tells us that we are not clearly on the path to resolving too big to fail.